Yeah. Um, what is this video titled? Oxygen philosophy. And news. We'll cover some news stories, obviously. Yeah, so um just gonna deal with we're gonna deal with deal with some stuff. The crime be pragmatic. It's gonna be raw. Some is some of the sense deep one. You know? Um I am fat currently. I'm overweight and I'm fat. Now people say because of my bones, oh you can carry it well. No. I am fat. Now, a lot of people are, are, are scared to self-analyze their situation like that because you know what I mean? they think you know I mean? like um, they're going to be hurting themselves. They will stay in denial. There's, um, there's women out there. I'm not going to go to any ethnicity or group because people really think I'm picking on, you know, I'm thick. I'm thick. I'm thick. Now, certain women, they can carry it. They can carry that weight. And, you know, it looks curvaceous. It looks what? No, you're fat. Go check your BMI. You're fat. What? <laughs> it is what it is. You are fat. Now, Accepting that doesn't mean you've got to stay there. But the quick, as soon as you can diagnose it, right, and explain it, as quick as possible, and accept the diagnosis, then you can start working around it. If you think you're thick and you're healthy and you're sexy, this girl, if this girl thinks she's thick, she's like, I haven't got a weight problem, then more than likely she's going to get diabetes because she's fooling herself. Yeah? Now for me, the older I get, the harder it is to get them pounds off. But in knowing that, I have to work cleverly in accordance to my age and my situation. That's what I have to do. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie it back into boxing in a minute, all right? But I have to go here, I have to go here. And no disclaimers, no, I'm not gonna disclaim it. When people, black people talk about the transatlantic slave trade, a lot of black people, there's these um, there's these grandiose notions that it was something that it wasn't, you know, like um, oh well, you know, we're the first men on earth, and we're the first, and we built civilization, and they were just cavemen, and this and. Then, but they never asked, well, okay, if, that, if that's true, they were just cavemen who were crawling on their knees. How, they, how did they dominate you and take you out of your home, right, and dominate you for 500 whatever amount of years? How did they do that? But they never asked that. The facts are, no one has no entitlement issues in this world, right? I could be doing this video now and anything could happen. You know what I mean? The roof could fall in because, you know, whatever the roof, but falling on my head, lightning, thunder, da, 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 anything, anything could happen. There's no entitlement issues. Life is very short. Yeah? Understand your situation. For what it is yeah now it doesn't work for everyone not everybody is strong enough to accept where they're at not not everybody is not everybody is not everybody is 
And I've seen a lot of people trying to take away Tony Bellew's victory for some reason. Oh, well, hey, it was this and that, and then he would have been... Well, I could argue that if Tony Bellew fought the cruiserweight David Hay, yeah, he would have probably lost. But then again, you, you could um, throw that scenario into several different spaces. Yeah? What if Tony Bellew fought David Hay when he was an amateur? Would David Hay have won then? I mean, how far, how much scenario do you want to make? On the night, Tony Bellew got it right. Now, I predicted Hay to win, but I did also say that this is not the foregone conclusion that everybody says it was, and it never was going to be. It never was going to be, yeah? Like, if you want to say that Bellew is this caveman and this, you know, limited, slugger, rudimentary, you can say all of that. You can say all, it doesn't, it's, it's got nothing to do with the fight on the night. It's got nothing to do with it, right? Me and EJ spoke to Kevin Kelly and he says, you don't really plan for a fight by planning for a fighter. You plan a certain style to develop, to, to you utilize for that fight. That's what you do. Steve Collins said, any fight can be won if you strategize correctly. It doesn't matter if the guy is faster than you and got more muscles or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's got a 600 and zero record. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. It's what are you going to do on the night? It doesn't matter. Yeah? It's like for months, and you guys know if you've been following, when you guys kept saying that David Hay could beat Anthony Joshua, and don't, I don't want to get into the, um, to the, to the thing where I'm assuming Joshua could have done where Bellew, because Bellew won the fight, Joshua didn't win. But he couldn't beat him. He could he could never be he could never beat Anthony Joshua. He could he just couldn't do it. He couldn't beat him. And one sec. Oh God. And um here's the thing, yeah. If you go to the Seven Getty, you'll see the wild cats waiting for certain animals to deteriorate, and then they'll get them, and they'll eat them. That's how, that's how that works. And when certain fighters reach a stage of age and fragility, right? All you have to do is strategize how to get them, and it's it's just that time. It's just that time. That's all it is, right? You've got to give Tony Bellew his credit. He diagnosed that the shoulder injury, he, he, he jotted that down. He noted the trajectory of the punches, no straight shots. He noticed that. And he got his guy. He got his guy, right? He moved away from him at the start of the fight. No one, nobody was, no, who, who was watching that and thinking, oh, I, I, I didn't see Ben, you having faster feet. But yo, he's, he's the more active guy. He's the younger guy. And when fighters age, right? And I'm, I'm not buying this from Mark Prince. He says very something, something very similar I was thinking on, the, on yesterday. When they age, you don't actually have to do that much to make them basically beat themselves. But when I say they're beating, no, you're beating them, but they are their bodies are basically beating them. Yeah? That same fragileness that David Hay showed in his foot movement against Bellew, and them same wild punches were the same wild punches that knocked out Demore and Arnold Jurgi. And that's the same performances that everyone, oh, isn't he isn't hitting hard, oh, doesn't he look good. No, that's the same dude. He weighed the same as he weighed for Mark Demore against Tony Bellew. So don't tell me he was faster when he fought Mark Demore 
than when he fought Tony Bellew because he was he wasn't faster. He was at the same speed for Mark Demore that as he was for Tony Bellew. He was at the same speed, but the tactics exposed and brought forward and brought to light where he really was at as a fighter. People say, well, if Hay wasn't injured, he would have still won. No, you can't. Before you go there, you, before you go, you can't go that far. You can't go that far. You've got to pull it back. You've got to rewind. You've got to rewind. Stay on the rewind. The whole point of Ben taking the fight was that the vigorous and strenuous action of moving in a boxing ring, which you have to do, even if you move slow, you have to move in a boxing ring. He knew that, that David Hay moving around with that body in the shape it, it was going to implode on itself. So that goes to Tony Bellew. He was relying on that to happen. He was relying on David Hay's body to break down and then he'll come and finish it off. So don't tell me that, oh, if he's not, that's what he was, that, that's what you do when you fight an aging fighter, right? When Corbett fought Sullivan, what did he do? Sullivan was getting pissed in pubs, drinking, I'm the toughest man, I'll drink you under the table and think. And then when he had to fight an organized Queensbury match with the gloves, rather than the brawling, Bare knuckle fight, what happened to him? He imploded. He imploded on himself. My guy stayed away from him. My guy plodded after him. And then after he 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 basically broke down. It didn't take much of, of um a punch to get him down. And he was knocked out. Very similar. Very similar. Same with um Jeffries when he fought, when James J. Jeffries fought Jack Johnson. Same thing. Same thing. That same thing. Johnson tied him up inside. Didn't let him push him back. The heat was bearing down on Jeffries, who just lost 300. On, he was 300 pound, I believe. I think he, he was about, yeah, in his retirement in the Alfalfa, Alfalfa Farm or wherever he, he, wherever he was. Yeah. And his body broke down in him, and then Johnson finished him off. That's what happens. This is what, when Ali fought Sonny Liston, Right? Let's not forget, right? They didn't give Sonny Liston a title shot in his prime. And they wouldn't accept him as champion. Sonny was not training as hard as he should be. He was running with the mob guys, living whatever life he was living. When he fought Ali, people thought he was going to murder Ali. It was crazy odds. Was it 25 to 1? I can't remember the odds. Crazy odds. What did Ali do? Oh. Step round. Let me let me step round the guy. Let me step round him. Jad him, poked him, jad him. Liston imploded on himself. Liston was throwing them big shots. Then what did he claim his his, his shoulder was sore? His so, uh, um, yeah, his shoulder. He shoulder injury, and his eye was all swollen. He took harder shots than that from Cleveland Williams. But the thing is, he was always in range to land, so he was he was okay. He was hitting air. He was hitting air. His legs couldn't carry him no further, and he imploded, and Ali finished him off. The credit goes to Ali, not Liston getting old. The credit goes to Ali, because that same Liston was still knocking out credible opposition. Right? He was still winning fights. Tony Bellew strategized to get his victory. And you, you can't take his victory away. The reason I need the transatlantic um, slave trade thing is like, um, I'll say the pro-blacks, they try and say, um, well, you know, um, it, it was unfair. They you used guns and they used the, no, no, you lost, we lost, we, <laughs> we lost, we lost. Stop making excuses. We lost, look. And analyze why you lost so in the next war, you won't do the same thing. That's what you lost. You lost. You know, 
You've got to accept it for what it is. You have to accept shit for what it is, man. You know? Like, if Triple G loses on Saturday, there's going to be a host of people coming out saying, oh, well, um, excuses. They're going to make excuses. Kelp Brook and his fans, they make it like, oh, um, what are they saying? Errol Spence is on drugs. That's the new thing. Where's the proof? Where, where's the proof he's on drugs? What, because he hasn't signed the Nevada thing first? Well, let's see if he signs it. And even if he doesn't, how will that prove he's on drugs? When Povetkin fought Glitchko, they went separate routes for their testing. Right? No one accused Povetkin of being on drugs then, although we later found he was. And nobody accused, well, there was accusations, but we don't know. We don't know either way. We know Klitschko's brother took them. People always looking for excuses. Like, I've heard people online saying David Hay has never lost. David Hay has never lost. Despite we see him get beat the other week. Just can't accept it. You got, I mean, people don't like, why, why don't people like accepting shit? You gotta learn how to accept shit. It doesn't mean you've got to stay in that beaten posture. You can move from it, but you have to accept, yo, you lost. Take your loss on the chin. Take your loss on the chin. And, you know, it's sickening to see, like, the like the Brook fanatics. I like Kel Brook. I'm not a big fan. But the Brook fanatics, they're, they're already trying to build up a plethora of excuses in case they get squared out. On the canvas, it, and it, it, it's, it's kind of pathetic, man. It's kind of pathetic, to be honest, man. It's kind of pathetic, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't see why people do that. I, I never understood it. Never understood it personally. Um, sixty-eight. Is there a movie about Solomon at all? Well, there is a there. Uh, there isn't. There, there is a film though. I think Errol Flynn plays. Um, James J. Corbett. And they, they do have some cameos from Sullivan in that. There's that film there. I can't remember what it's called. Quite, it was quite, I, I, I did watch some of it. I did watch some of it. See, my, I, I'm not a great film person because I don't have the attention deficit, deficit to um, watch a lot of films. But it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah, you know, that's what it is, man. When fighters age, you don't. All you got to do is is be like that lion looking at the prey, saying, "Okay, you know, big old wildebeest, but with that leg there, there, man, mangled up and stuff like that, I can get you. I know how to beat you now." And it's not luck. It's not okay if if it was fifty years before. <laughs> it's none of that. It is what it is. It is what it is. But boxing is time. Everyone has a time when they're going to be vulnerable to lose. Yeah? It might even be in your prime. It might be in your prime. I think um, Bellew strategized extremely well, personally. And everything Hayes showed in his comeback, it showed in the Bellew fight. Oh, he lost now. He lost. He lost. And that's just one of the things there. And... Um, I'm even thinking with the Danny Jacobs fight, man. Like, after watching Triple G, the right uppercut from Kell Brook, there's, there's an outside shot, man. There is an outside shot for, for Danny. There is an out, Once again, I'm, I'm going to pick Triple G to win. But there's an outside shot for Danny to show up and beat the fuck out of him. There's an outside shot. You know? And when he does win, once again, it won't just be Danny. It won't just be Danny. Triple G is going to impl plot the same things that has got, been winning in fights. Like you see him walk through fights and grin at Willie Monroe after taking a punch and still didn't move his head. One day, he's going to take that big shot on the chin and he's going to grin. And then the follow-up shot is going to go bang. And he's going to go out. 
Because no one's chin is made of metal. Nobody's. Nobody's. Now, it's all good fun watching it happen. But, you know, Carl Frucks used to say he had a metal chin. But I see him get put on the canvas. Ryan Goodwin, everyone has a sell by date, Beats. That's right. Everyone has a every everyone has their sell by date. And you've got to be there to take full advantage. DC Beats says, What's up, Beats? He says, Tony timed that fight perfectly. Yeah, of course he did. He timed it beautifully. He timed it beautifully. And um everybody made a big deal about the power, right? But he took hey, he took Good shots, them, them same shots that Hay landed on him, knocked out them guys he was fighting before. They knocked him out. Then you at them, he at them, he at them. He got hit, he at them, and he can't, he, his legs didn't wobble all over the place. He at the shots, and he kept going. You know? 68, he says, Jacobs wins. Listen, he has a great chance, man. He has a great chance. He has a great chance. He has a great chance. What he, what he has to do, though, he has to kind of instill that thing that into Triple G that I know your faults. He has to instill, I know your faults, and you're just a man, just like me. Once he can convince Triple G of that, then he has a chance. Then he has a chance. Dream Chase, he says, Daddy can win his fight, but Triple G's defense has always been poor. But as he gets older, who knows how he will react? Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, man. You know? Like, um, even if he was letting Kelbrook get in shots off, it doesn't matter. They, 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 he was still getting hit. He was still getting hit. He was still getting hit, man. So, it's there for Danny. He can get, let, look, let's make no mistake. Unless he's knocked out early, and unless he just totally um, loses the plot, he will hit tri Triple G. And he'll hit him plentiful as well. He will hit tri Triple G. He's there to get hit. He is there to get hit. You know? Ryan Goodwin, I think Ho Ho Hopkins timed, timed the Jones rematch perfectly. Yeah, he got, yeah, 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 yeah. Jones didn't have no confidence. And he took full advantage. Carl Palmer says, now nah, Beats, Hay was already injured. He couldn't get full. Yeah, because he was he was old, because he wasn't living the life. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, you think he wasn't injured when he fought Mark DeMora and them guys? You think he was in perfect shape? No, nah, he wasn't in perfect shape. He wasn't in perfect shape. But he won them fights. <laughs> he couldn't get leverage into the punches because he couldn't get Tony because he was moving. Yeah? Listen. Listen, listen, Carl. Let me let me let me let me drop this drop the jewels on you because I remember what people say. It's not that I have an extra insight. I remember what people say. Andre Ward said it all starts with the legs. It all starts with the legs. So when you're watching boxing, it's not just man throwing punches. You can't punch without your legs underneath you. You can't punch what's not there in front of you, bro. That's how it works, yeah? When Tony Bellew started moving away from David Hay, he had to start bouncing on his feet and move and try and look for his openings, right? That's how boxing works, right? If that old gazelle in the zoo, in the, not in the zoo, in the jungle, Starts running, right? And let's see. Let's say if a cheetah's chase, if a cheetah is chasing that gazelle, the cheetah has a certain amount of time to catch it because it can only go fast for so long, right? So if it has to run, I don't know how long it is before they puff out. If it has to do, let's say, half a mile at that speed, then that's all it has. That's all it has. Yeah, and if he catches him before then, he wins. If not, then the gazelle has a chance to survive, and he wins, right? But you moved away. That is strategy. That was strategy. Carl Palmer, he says, school me beats, no problem. 
how did I have the um, David Hay was winning after four or five rounds? But the whole point is he was um, Billy was supposed to be knocked out after four or five. I had Billy, I had Billy up on the scorecard. I mean, um, hey, I had Hay up on the scorecard. I had Hay winning, but it's not a five round fight. That's the thing with boxing. You, you've always got to um, look at the strat strategizing over 12. And a lot of people don't do that. They keep, you know, you know, if someone does well for a few, oh, but look how well Khan was doing against Canelo. Well, <laughs> how, how much round did it go? It didn't even get halfway. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it was an amateur fight, he would have won. Yeah, fair enough. It's not. Pro boxing is 12 rounds. It used to be 15. you got to strategize for the whole shit. Because listen, if the fight is three rounds, you have nine minutes not to get hit on the chin. If it's six rounds, you have 18 minutes of reaction not to get in the hit. If it's 12, it's 36. The, the odds of you not getting hit by a big puncher in 36 rounds is not good. It's not good. And if you don't have a great chin, so it was not. So people trying to say, "Oh, it was a fluke that Canelo got Khan." Come on, man! It was, it was no fluke. It was no fluke that Golovkin beat Brook. Come on, stop with that. Stop. It was no fluke that Belly beat Fig. It wasn't the foot injury. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, man, you got you've got to do better for a longer period than that. You know, DCB. Dream Chasers, that's very true. People need to get off this free round was doing well, Bull. Yeah, of course. Of course. Carl Palmer, Bellew did well to take the shots he was hit with, but no one could tell me that this isn't anything but a hollow victory. No, it's a bit, it's a bit. You tell Bellew's kids that it's a hollow victory. You tell Bellew that. That's Bellew's biggest victory of his, of his life, so I don't know how it's hollow. And, he, and he's already beat decent people. He's beat Nathan Cleverly, he's beat Makabu. And this is still his biggest victory. So it is not, not hollow to me. Not knowing um, the history of boxing. You know, that's what you, this is. This is how boxing works, bro. Yeah. So, see, people always say this uh, it's a hollow victory. If you're going to say that Tony Bellew beating David Hay is a hollow victory, well, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say this then. Well, Joe Frazier beating Ali is a hollow victory. That's a hollow victory, right? You know why? Because that wasn't the same Ali who had the foot speed that he fought Liston with. Is that a hollow victory? No, it's not. No, it's not. Joe Frazier trained with the guy, trained for the guy who came in the ring. What do you want Joe to do? He get a time machine? No, he beat Ali. He beat Ali, broke his jaw, he didn't break his joint, swallowed it up pretty bad. And beat him. So you can say anybody who beat Ali after the draft is a hollow victory. You can say um, Holmes versus Ali is a hollow victory. It's not a hollow victory. How are you going to say a hollow? It's not a people will say that, but that, that was the lineal, that was a lineal championship fight. That's what it was. It was the lineal championship. Holmes already had the WBC title, but he didn't have the lineal title from Ali, and he got the lineal title in that fight. You know? It is what it is, man. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Maybe Holmes, Ali shouldn't have been in that ring. You could argue that, but... You know? Holmes! That's what I remember Ali saying after. You beat me up for me. For. Who would I pick in a rematch? I'll pick Tony Bellew in a rematch. I'll pick Bellew. I'll pick Tony Bellew. Dream, dream, dream chasing. He says, there are 12 rounds. Doing good for a quarter of the fight doesn't mean you did well, especially if you don't get past half of the fight. Exactly. Exactly. And there's, see, there's another good point you make there. Like that people say Washington exposed Wilder for edging the round with a solid jab. They're not making it past the halfway mark of the fight. Exactly. I mean, like, um, it, it wasn't a hollow victory, you know? 
This is what Wilder does. He knocks people out. He knocks people. Wilder doesn't need what, what you see. People don't take account into fit. Wilder doesn't need to win a whole lot of rounds. Wilder doesn't. He just needs to get one on your chin and turn it around. Now, one day it may not work, but what you see, the the one day it doesn't work, and let's say in Wilder's fortieth fight, he loses and he's out box. Everyone's gonna say, "See, see, see." But what about all the other? See, what about all the other thirty-eight that he won though? <laughs> what about you know? You won't be right because he loses. Because he already has one of the best KO percentages we've seen out of any modern day heavyweight. So you won't be right. You know? Um, D. Obianuli, Mike Tyson's last fight was a hollow victory against Kevin McBride. Well, um, when you thought hollow for who? It was not hollow for Kevin McBride. That's the highlight of his career. Yeah? You know, that's the highlight of, of Kevin McBride's career or Danny Williams' career. That's the highlight of their career. Like, look what Lennox Lewis fought. I mean, that's one of the biggest victories of Lennox's, um, Lennox's career. Showtime and HBO both showed that fight. That's one of the big fights in history. Yeah. Now you could now obviously if Lennox had fought the 1980 version of Tyson, yeah, of course it would be tougher. Of course it would have been tough. But at the same time, there were still people picking Tyson to win. Lots of people, and not just um casuals, there was credible people picking Tyson to win. But he didn't get the victory. You know. D. Obianuli, he says, Hey has only himself to blame turning up injured. And calling the public. Yeah, well, if he was injured, you know, that, that's what happens. If you fight injured, that's what happens. But I don't believe he was in tip top shape when he fought Demore or Georgia. I don't think he was in top shape for them fights either. You know? That's why he was in the ring so heavy, because he couldn't shed all the weight off. He didn't deliberately come in that heavy. He couldn't shed the weight. And that's probably because he can't train to the same level and intensity as he previously could. 68 rendezvous on boxing, true. How many rounds did Ali win versus Foreman? Um, I don't know. I think Foreman was probably hit ahead on the scorecard. But um, Ali did some good countering. He did do some good countering in a, in a few of the rounds. But, he, but it wasn't the same Ali. It wasn't the same Ali. But that, is, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a worse RV either, because who knows? Maybe the, the, the guy who used to move around the ring, um, I don't know, maybe he couldn't take a, a, as good as a, a shot. And he gets knocked out by Foreman. It, it is what it is. That, that's Foreman. That's, um, uh, that's, and that, that's one of Ali's best victories. And it's one of Foreman's highlights of his career. You know, Carl Palmer, the thing is, when he fights better opposition, there is a much bigger chance that someone will land on Wilder's chin first. Just like when Hay stepped up against Bellew, there was a much better chance that his deteriorating physical con condition was going to implode on him. That's why it's not a fluke. That's why it's not a fluke. I, I mean, see, see, what you said there, if you, if you look at the context of what you said, and this isn't being disrespectful, to you, it doesn't make any sense. The higher anybody's caliber of opposition goal, the um, ups, means there's a bigger chance that they will be disadvantaged from when they were facing inferior competition. Surely. Surely you have to accept that. True beats, but we have to accept that fighters have primes and they also fight when they are past their prime, so we have to judge accordingly. Yeah, but you still have to strategize, no matter what you want to say. Even if the guy's past his prime, you still have to, what, so what? So, so you're telling me, if you're a boxer, and you're fighting an all-time great fighter who is past his prime, you're going to say, oh, well, he's past his prime, I'm not going to bother training for this fight. No, you have to train, yeah, listen, listen, listen. 
Even if he is past his prime, if he has anything left in the if he has anything, even 40% left in the locker room and he's a great fighter, you still have to strategize accordingly or he'll beat you. Or he will beat you. That's why he's an all-time great. You can't just sleep with him because he's old. You have to strategize. It's not just, oh, I'll go in there and win easy. No, it don't work like that. It, it's never worked like that. It's never worked like that. Yeah? That's why a lot of fighters have their last hurrahs. Look when Ray Mercer fought um, Larry Holmes. Everybody thought Mercer was going to kill Larry. And then Larry started doing a shoulder roll on the guy. And beat the crap out of him. And beat the crap out of him. Oh, Larry. That's what happens in boxing. That's what happens. You have to strategize. For, look, because look, them guys... Have, even if an old ATG has seen more than these youngsters in one day than they've seen in their lives in boxing. They've got a wealth experience uh, uh, tricks. And if you don't prepare a court, they'll beat you. Old or not, they will beat you, bro. They will beat you. Trust me on that. They will beat you. Yeah? Don't be fooled. Even when you watch Larry Holmes versus Ali, People say, oh, yeah, oh, he's old. Yeah, he was old. He was old. Yeah? Larry also had an 82-inch reach and one of the best jabs. And if you watch the... See, people people get caught up. I, I noticed that with that particular fight. People watch it. Oh, he's old, man. Look at oh, him. But they don't look at... Oh, boy, Holmes' jab is dangerous. Look at the... Look, look watch, watch the fight. Look, detach your emotion from the fight and actually watch the fight. Actually watch the fight. Actually watch the fight. And don't get caught up in past prime. Yes, we've done that already. You've already watched it 50 times and said he's past his prime. Actually watch the fight as two neutral fighters. And look how good Larry Holmes' jab is. Yeah? And then watch that. Well, watch uh, Ali for Trevor Burbick next. And he actually gives Trevor Burbick a good fight. And Trevor Burbick went on to become world champion. And Trevor Burbick gave Larry Holmes his hardest title defense up until that time when he fought him. Right? It doesn't matter if they're past their prime. They still have a wealth of tricks. You, listen, 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 listen. If Tony Bellew went in there with David Hay and said, ah, oh, fuck that man, you know what I mean? I'm just going to stand right in front of him. He would have probably got banged out like Mark DeMore. And Arnold Jones. Boxing is not as simple as you guys are saying. And it's, I'm not, not being disrespectful. You're not giving the, the sport its proper respect. Yeah? Just like the analogy with the jungle while making. If the lion makes one false move with that um, wildebeest, that wildebeest could kill it. Easy. They're very physically strong animals. All it's got to do is go wrong one, at one, one time. And it's dead. It's dead. Um, yeah, we know you don't think Wild is that good. But... <laughs> How, you, 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 Dillian White, so what? You take that serious. Dillian taking the piss out of Wilder. Wilder is way advanced. But let, let, all right, let, let's put Dillian in with Wilder because Dillian ain't going to last four. I guarantee. Well, no, Dillian will go a few rounds, but he's getting knocked out. He's getting knocked out. He got hurt by Derek's punches. He's getting knocked out against Wilder. Given quality for life. None of the heavyweights are uh, good. So Wilder is in the same boat as the rest. None of them have established themselves yet. None of them. Carl Palmer, like he's in the swimming team. Yeah, well, the swimming team have got 37 KOs in 38 fights. So, you know I mean? I, I, I'm not laughing with that. You you guys can be in that court. I don't think it's funny. Because ask, Ger ask, ask Gerald Washington if he thinks he fights like he's in the swimming team. And I bet you any money you pick Gerald Washington to win. <laughs> I 
D. Obianuli at Carlton Palmer. People criticize Wilder, but how many guys would you honestly bet to beat him? Yeah? See, Carlton, you would have put David Hay in there. Why didn't you put David Hay in there? Because I know you had him in there before. What about David Hay, Carlton? Let's put David Hay in there. You got Tyson, Vlad, Ortiz, hey, what about David Hay? You know, no, no David Hay no more? Oh, because he got beaten. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Put David Hay in there. Damn, man. You've got to be careful, man. You've got to be careful in there, yeah? Them old, old great fighters, they're like wounded animals even when they're losing. They just take take one flashback of greatness. Like when Jack, who was, who was Jack Dempsey fighting? Jack Sharkey. Is it Jack Sharkey? Who was he fighting, man? Let me see if I can remember. That, that's a classic example, man. The Boston Gun. The Boston Gun. Yep, Jack Sharkey. When he um he was fighting um Jack Sharkey was fighting um Jack Dempsey, and Dempsey, you know, it, it was um it it was I won't say it was part out of his prime, but you know he was getting up there in age. He was getting up there a little in age, and Sharkey was an upcoming dude, and Sharkey was beating the brakes of Dempsey, beating the brakes of Dempsey. Dempsey switched his attack downstairs, and he hit him low. Hit him low a, a few times, a few times. And Sharky turned around and looked at the referee. Jeffrey, De 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 Dempsey just left hooked him out of it. Left hook him. And people say, oh, a dirty fight. Oh, man, Sharky was winning. No, you lost the fight. If you mean, listen, it's, what is that? Protect yourself all the times. He lost the fight. You got mugged out. Of the fight. What you think Dempsey was just gonna let you win in a sportsmanlike way and just yeah, no, 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 that that's real shit. That's real shit. Dempsey won fair and square. Yeah, the referee didn't didn't catch the low shots. You turned away, then bang. You caught that big left hook. Out you go. Out and go. That's boxing, I'm afraid. It's boxing, I'm afraid. And um, as for the Wilder thing, the the, the I don't see you, you guys focus really hard on this swinging wild, wildly thing. When he been swinging wildly, he's had both his opponents incapacitated, finish. And anyway, let's go back to the swinging wildly thing in the Gerald Washington fight. You do realize. That some of them punches did let he didn't miss all of them, right? And when he was swinging, the referee jumped in front of him, right? Which took him off balance from some of the punches he was throwing. The referee stopped him. You may, you guys make a big deal of that. <laughs> Listen, I'd rather be swinging like a girl when you knocked out rather than be the guy who got knocked out. So that's my position on that. Yeah, he, he was swinging like a girl. My my dude was on on the floor like a girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know oh, you did forget. Hey, I know you forget. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> yeah, because you think you you think David Hay is something that Carlton Palmer is, is something that that's why you you're back to beat him in a rematch. You think David Hay is something that he's not. For some reason, people have, have it in their head that David Hay is this formidable heavyweight, which he's not. He's not a formidable heavyweight. He isn't. He isn't. He was a great cruiserweight, but he's not a formidable heavyweight. <laughs> Given quality for life. And he says... Um, you will never see a fully dedicated Fury, so stop wishing. No, I, I don't believe you. I don't believe you will see a, a dedicated Fury. I think um, he, he's probably got in, 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 in him maybe to have one really good, maybe a couple more really good um, training camps and maybe a couple of performances. But he's not going to keep the title for a long time. He'll either 
wander off like he just did there, or he's going to get beaten. That's what, that's what's going to happen. I think he can win the title back, but how long can he hold it for? I don't know. And you keep referencing 36. There's loads of fighters that were 36. Vladimir Klitschko was in his 40s, bruh. What's his age? His age. His age. His age. Heavyweights, listen, 36 is actually a good age for a heavyweight. They mature slower. It's not old for a heavyweight, actually. It's not that old for a heavyweight. Mr. Doc, the trolls are at it again, I take it, Beats. Ah, oh, we, we have fun in here, man. I, I, I like when Carlton's in here, because Carlton fucking... <laughs> Carlton, Carlton sets the, the hornets off. <laughs> the cats are much the pigeons. He, he knows it as well. You know what I mean? Dio Bionu, yeah, Carlton, I think Hayes done. His movement was off, and he was swinging worse than Wilder in <laughs> the rounds. I want to pick Hay, but against Kovalev right now. Well... You're talking about his injuries. Um, didn't Wilder have any injuries? How can you? Wait, wait, oh, you see, you see, you see, you see the hypocrisy in boxing. You see the fucking hypocrisy, right? You keep talking about Hayes' injuries. How many injuries? Oh, like, oh look, look, injuries. This way, look. How much injuries did Wilder have recently? His bicep was mashed up. He broke his hand. But you haven't mentioned what? The, 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 you haven't mentioned that once. You haven't mentioned Wilder's injuries once, but how much time do you mention Hayes' injuries? <laughs> you haven't mentioned how many injuries. Wilder's injured all over the place. He broke his hand how many times in recent years? And don't get me wrong, that could be, that could be um, due to his technique in punching. It could be. Maybe not. Maybe he just punches too too hard for his bone density. But you haven't mentioned that. Remember, when you're gonna use that injured that injury shit excuse, boxers get injured. That's what happens in boxing. They get injured. Boxers get injured. You know, that's what happens. Yeah, 36 is a good age for a heavyweight. Oh, what, what are you talking about? 36 is a good age for a heavyweight. That's not old for a heavyweight. Yeah, well, like I said, Deontay Wilder's had injuries, Carl. Deontay Wilder's had injuries. But it doesn't matter if Wilder's had them done. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm going to go by your theory. Deontay Wilder won against Gerald Washington. How brilliant would he have been if he wasn't injured? How about that? Did you ever take in consideration in the early rounds? See? It's good that I have a channel because I pick up a lot of shit. No one's asked, oh, I wonder if Wilder was a li little apprehensive to throw the right hand after the bicep injury. Or the broken hand, if he was apprehensive to throw shots. Maybe that's why Gerald, Gerald Washington was getting off before him. No one said that. I mean, I'm, not even, I'm not even putting that down as a reason. But it's funny. On certain fighters, you have every excuse, age, injuries. But on other fighters, you don't mention their injuries. Whether they've won or lost, you don't, you don't mention it at all. You don't mention it at all. The reconstructed shoulder was years ago, the, the surgery on that. That was years back, the reconstructed shoulder cough, cough, right? While his injuries were, were recent, it was just a few months back. It was just a fucking few months back when he fought Chris Ariola. Yeah, three years of, re of, of recuperation, that is. Three years of recuperation. And reconstruction and rehabilitation. You know? Now, you, you guys rationalize too much. Everyone gets injured. Everyone gets injured. That's, that's boxing. Boxers get injured. Yeah? I tell you what. I tell, let me tell you this now. If we was to eliminate injuries in every... Let's just stay in the heavyweight division. If we 
was to eliminate injuries out of every bad heavyweight performance. You'd have no discussion here at all because everybody would have an excuse of why they lost. Everybody. Everybody. Vitaly Klitschko, you could say, oh, I, I would have still been champion if I wasn't injured. Lennox Lewis would say something. Everybody would say something. Mike Tyson could say, remember my broken back. I broke my back. Remember um, Holyfield, didn't he have an arm injury? Mr. Doc, one could argue Wilder came back too soon. Yeah, you could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he, see, but the thing is, no one uh, see that Wilder gets no credit at all. Wilder had his hand like strapped up after surgery, and he was he, he was practicing his left hand. He was in the gym working out. No one, no one says, man, that's one dedicated guy. No. Nah. It's just all the flaws, everything bad you can find about to say, say, say you just pile it all in, all in, all in. Everybody plays with injuries. Give him quality for life. If, if you think Hank Tor is Achilles, you'll fall for anything. Yeah, could be, could be, yeah, you might be made, yeah, they might be overblowing that, yeah, could be. Mr. Duck, yeah, it's the same in the NFL, everyone plays with injuries. Premier League in the UK, same thing. You play with injuries. You play with injuries. I remember, like, I, when I used to play football at school, I used to play for the team, for the borough, Harrogate Borough. I'd have a Sunday team, but and I'd be injured a lot of times, but you do you mean, you'd have the sports band, you run the bus, go in here, and the coaches training here, playing it, and you just play for injuries. Because if you didn't, you would just miss most of the season. If you didn't play, and I know it's not boxing, but it's the only analogy I have. When I used to play football as a, as a kid and a, a teenager, you play injured or you want to play. You get no, you, you learn how to function with the injuries. That's what you do. That's what you do. You know? D. Obianoni says, Beats, the issue some people have with Wilder is the opponent level in 38 fights. I think that's why he gets such a hard time for the most part. Well, how come David Hay doesn't get no hard time with his opponents that he's fought at heavyweight? Look who he's fought. He fought Mark fucking Demore, right? He fought Arnold Jurgi. He fought Tony Bellew, who everyone thought it was going to be a mismatch. He fought washed up... Um, John Ruiz, he fought all the Harrison, and he doesn't get nothing. It's the most unfair thing. Carl Palmer, you can't play football with a snapped Achilles. D. Obianuli, a given quality. Nah, I think the injury is legit. He was pitching in Germany a few days before the fight. Maybe he was there. That was a built-in excuse for him. He could have, yeah, let me fly out to Germany just in case I lose. Maybe, maybe you planned that. So if you guys are going to be so cynical and wilder, I'm going to be cynical all your shit. Yeah, he probably pre-planned that. You know, a little built-in excuse he, he manufactured there. You know what I mean? And if that's what you guys are going to do. I'm going to do exactly what you do. I'm going to do exactly what you do. Why not? Because it's fun doing that. People say Errol Spence is on drugs. Because the fight is, is, is really close to becoming to fruition now. So, oh, he's on drugs now because of Varda. Says who? Says who? Madness. Mr. Doc, Carlton Palmer, Jack Youngblood played in a playoff game with a broken freaking leg. Did he? How the fuck did he do that? DW nearly three belts to cruiser and one title of heavy is very accomplished for a boxer. Probably the most accomplished from the UK since Lewis. Uh, listen, as a cruiserweight, no doubt. But at the same time, the cruiserweight division 
it, did, it doesn't have the same level of, of opposition as, as a lot of other divisions had. And, and it, 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 listen, it wasn't very strong back then. Matt Cronelli and um, Gene Moore, it was, like, it was good. Listen, no, I'm not taking it away. It was good. But if, you, if you're going to be critical like you're doing, it's not, it's not as great as you're saying. It's not as great as you're saying then. I mean, he didn't fight Dwight Muhammad Cowie like Holyfield did, did he? In his 12th fight. If we're going to be really critical, you got to be real. we got to be real. You guys, you, 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 look, you, look, look, look. All the criticism, criticisms that you have for certain fighters, unless you acknowledge it's, it's biased, it can be thrown in all the fighters that you're flag waving for. Yeah? Given quality for life, it takes 12 to 16 weeks to get over a torn Achilles. And Hay may not recover. Why he's talking about a trilogy? Hay's finished, man. David Hay's finished. David Hay is finished. David Hay is finished. Yeah? He never was what you guys thought he was at heavy. He never was. He never was, I'm afraid. You know? He never was. Why didn't he fight Shannon Briggs? Come on. Answer, you guys want to talk about what? Why didn't he fight Shannon Briggs? When he agreed to. You know? He's finished, man. He's finished. I didn't say you're necessarily hating. I'm saying you're extra critical, D, of your newly. Um, I want to see Wilder in a real fight. I want to see David Hay in a real heavyweight fight. <laughs> I mean, Tyson Fury, who's he for? Like, apart from um, the Klitschko win, which you guys are going to live off forever, he hasn't fought anybody either. If we're going to use the same critical standards that you are using, he hasn't fought anybody either. Mr. Doc, if Hay tore his Achilles, it's over, unless his surgeon performs a miracle. 68 is laughing out loud. <laughs> Look, man, we could go to tri Triple G. Has who's Triple G fought then? Has Keith Furman ever won a fight without any controversy either? He's, he's flawed as well. He's flawed. Lots of fighters are flawed. He's still a good fighter. Carl Palmer, I'm tired of seeing him knock over bums. I mean, who cares about a Stiverne rematch? Yo, you guys were predicting Gerald Washington to beat the guy. And now you mean you're tired of seeing him knocking over bums. I remember you. Listen, man. Come on, man. Gerald Washington is better than any of the guys that David Hay has fought in his comeback, right? And he's better than Deontay, he's better than um, Audley Harrison, right? He's better than Audley Harrison. He was be better than John Ruiz at that stage of John Ruiz's career, right? Come on, man. You, you, you guys, <laughs> you guys, guys are just being unfair. Just being unfair. Just being unfair. And no one's saying, you see, the thing is, no one has ever said Wilder is an elite guy yet. No, no one's established himself as elite. But, the fact that you have so much, it's crazy, man. Um, all fighters are flawed. Why do I say Derek Chisora is a psychopath? Well, maybe I said that, but um, I made so many videos. You, you show me the quote where I said I tell you what, show me the quote where I said it so I can at least put it in context. Then I'll answer that. Yeah? Show me the video or just, just um, tag the name of the video so I can at least say your context before I, <laughs> before I go there. <laughs> um, all right, Carlton, who, who, who's... Who's Hay beat better than Washington at heavy? B bring me a load of guys that Hay has beat, beat, beat that's better than Washington at heavyweight. 
JD says Wilder needs to fight the top guys though. Yeah, of course he does. Of course he does. Of course he does. You know. But you know, um, he, listen, man, listen, listen, listen. I've, listen, the, the, you know the way I see. You see, when when I go through videos like this, it make that's when the cynical part of me comes out. I think this is why boxers should not fight for glory. Fight for money and get the fuck out. You know, fight for money and get the fuck out. Because even when he was fighting, going to go to fight Pavetkin, people were still critiquing him. Oh, he doesn't really want to take the fight. Oh, he's this, that. Oh, and then, and then when Pavetkin got fit, oh, you see, he won't fight anybody. Hold on. Didn't you just see the guy took drugs and the fight got cancelled? Carl Palmer, do I think Washington is a top heavyweight? Um, well, he was un unbeaten. He was unbeaten. He was ranked. He was ranked. Or he, 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 listen, you can't just fight any voluntary. He was ranked, which is uh, more than what I can say for Hayes' opponents. They were ranked somewhere. But Washington was better than anyone that Hay fought in his comeback, including Tony Bellew, at least on paper. At least on paper, you know. Yeah, Ryan's got it. It's not wild as Fort Pavetkin took drugs, and then he got injured. You know, I'm not making excuses for him, but that's that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened, man. Mr. Doc, I'm not even critiquing Golovkin. I think Golovkin has done okay. I've done done okay, but if we're gonna like any that them same criticisms for other fighters could be leveled at the guy guys like Golovkin, you know. Um, I think I think that Danny um, is a good good op opponent for him. I think Danny's a good opponent, the, uh, but he's not gonna see that. That's the thing. He's not gonna get. He, he's not gonna get the credit. For beating Danny, he's not like if he knocks out Danny early. What people, what people gonna say? Oh, yeah, you remember he, he got beaten by um Pirog and he got floored by Mora. That's what they're gonna say. That's what they're gonna say. The bottom line is, you need to be in super fights, whether you're Deontay Wilder or Golovkin, you need to be in super fights. Um, and Thurman did not conclusively beat Garcia. No, it, it, not in my opinion. Not in my opinion, he didn't. He did not conclusively beat Garcia. D. Obiadouli. No way. It, it was, he did not conclusively do anything. He did not conclusively beat Danny. He's never conclusively won a top-level fight. Or someone's topped him after they did it, like Errol Spence with um, Bundy. Someone's topped him after. That's why um, Robert Garcia says, um, I don't think Thurman's established himself as the top guy yet. That's what he said. That's what he said. He's, he's not like the daddy of the division. He might, uh, he, you might ha have a case to say, okay, he's slightly ahead, but he's not the daddy. He's not the daddy. He doesn't have a unanimous hold on that division. There's just no way. No way. No way. You see, when Leonard knocked out, Tommy Hearns knocked him out. I'm the daddy, 147, right? When Curry knocked out Milton McCrory, I'm the daddy. IBF, WBA, WBC. I'm the daddy. He's not the daddy. He, he didn't. He, there's no way to me he conclusively outboxed Garcia. There's just no way. There's no way. No way at all. No way. I think it could have, I, I, like, if I was going to give the decision to anybody, I'd give it to Thurman. But it could have been a draw. Could have been a draw. Tony Morgan, sort your thoughts, laugh out. <laughs> Given quality. 10 to 2, but judges didn't see it that way, nor me. Laughing out loud. 
Carl Palmer, who would I like to see Wilder fight next? Um, don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter who he fights. People are going to get critique that guy until he either loses or retires undefeated. It doesn't matter who he fights. It doesn't matter. If he knocks out Kim Kong Ortiz, you're going to say he was too old. Oh, yeah, he waited until he was old, and you know what I mean, and this and that. It doesn't matter who he beats. You're going to critique Wilder. That has become the thing to do is critique Wilder. But you prop up guys like David Hay, who ain't did shit. Hasn't did shit for years. I hear people bigging up Huey Fury. Who the fuck's Huey Fury for fighting for a world title? Who is he for? And then people bigging up Joseph Parker. What, Joseph Parker beat, the, jo, Andy Ruiz beat Joseph Parker, in my opinion. Andy Ruiz beat Joseph Parker. I don't think Andy Ruiz goes six rounds with Deontay Wilder. I know. I know. But I saw, I saw Andy Ruiz beat Joseph Parker. I saw it. <laughs> Give him quality for life. Guys take drugs because they're scared of Wilder's flaws, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, all these opponents, I mean, the, the drug out their, their eyeballs for some reason. Why? Why? Newly. CJ Russ didn't think Floyd beat Canelo though. Thurman won easy. Nah, sorry. Comparison doesn't work. Nobody thought that Canelo beat Floyd. Nobody. So we all knew that was terrible judging. Right? There's a there's, there's a lot of people who thought Danny won. Right? So don't try and say Keith was as convincing as Floyd over Canelo D. It's not true. That ain't true. It's not true. You know it ain't true. I know it ain't true. So you, you, Another comparison. Get another comparison, guy. Given quality for life. CJ Russ was also paid by De La Hoya and was forced out. What happened to these judges? Nothing. Exactly. Exactly. Aaron Oniak, in context of saying that his behavior is just a nuisance and observed. Well, when did I say that as well? I'm going to wait until... Bring me a video or a quote. Uh, or a tangible quote that I said to, to Aaron Oniak about Derek Chisholm. Bring me a quote. I'm not going to answer it yet. Bring me a quote with something I've said. <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll go. JD, circumstances for fights not happening can be understood, but if you had a certain amount of defenses, you're made accountable for your actions. Um, what, like Kel Brook, you mean? <laughs> Give it quality for life. Like I said, be objective. Yeah. Carl Palmer. Thurman is fighting real challenges, some of the best in his div div division. So you're saying Thurman is fighting a higher level of opposition than Floyd? Because you see, you're saying that in hindsight. But then people say Sean Porter cannot fight. He's wild. He has no style or technique. They hate watching him fight. And that was life and death. Him and Thurman. It was life and death. If Floyd was to fight Sean Porter, they'd be saying cherry pick. That's what they'd be saying. If Floyd was to... Remember when Floyd, they were saying oh, that Danny Garcia was going to be installed as Floyd's next challenger? What were they saying? Oh, this is just an easy way to get to 50. But now, when guys like Thurman are facing these guys, oh, the best in the division. And D. Obianuli, CJ Russ paid by Oscar, question mark. Given quality for life, Delahoya checked himself into rehab during Colt binge while his golden boy was in his biggest fight of his career. It was a shield of the payoff. D. Obianu, it's a speculation then. <laughs> well, listen, if we're going to do speculation, I, 
I'm got no like if if you're gonna, if you're gonna I've got no problem problem speculating that somebody paid CJ Russell for that scorecard. And the fact that you would compare it to Mayweather um Thurman Garcia to Canelo and think it, it, uh, it's not a good not a good comparison, bro. Ryan Goodwin. I don't know why Brooks' name is being thrown around as number one. I don't think the Porter fight was convincing, in my opinion. Neither did I, to be honest. Neither did I. I didn't think it was that convincing. I think um, if he beats Errol Spence, you know, he's still not going to get all the credit that he's due because they're going to say, ah, oh, Errol Spence was untested. Ah, oh, he was a hype job. So, and that's Brooks fans who said that as well. So they've, they've killed any credit that Kelbrook can get from that because they keep calling Errol Spence a hype job and whatever. Carl Palmer, he'd get all the credit from me if he fought Ortiz. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. So if he knocked out Ortiz and started swinging like a girl, as you said, you'd still bring that up. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. JB, if Wilder fight, fights Ortiz or AJ Pulev, that would be acceptable. No, he wouldn't. 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 <laughs> I just don't think it would. You know what I mean? Give equality for life. CJ Russ was forced out. No one can no longer rule something with Shady. Yeah, for that to be the case. It, listen, there was definitely something corrupt. Of course there was something corrupt going on. If, if, listen, that was that's total corruption. Total corruption. Even Floyd haters were saying nah, 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 nah. That's total corruption. Mr. Doc, I'm far from the biggest fan of Porter, but to be fair, who beat Sean Porter conclusively? Um, I thought um, Diaz did actually in the first fight. Was it a, was that squad a draw? I, I thought I thought he beat Sean quite um, conclusively. Um, I thought um, the Thurman fight was close, very close. Uh, JB, I agree. Parker Ruiz and Huey. Are not on the upper level. Well, look, they're just amongst. They're, they're just some of many heavyweights who are, you know, in the mix trying to establish themselves as um, as somebody, and which is not, which no one has done yet. No one has done yet. Vitali, his last fight was a loss. Fury didn't follow up the victory. Wilder got injured, and everyone thinks he. I mean, he fights like a girl. He doesn't fight nobody. Uh, Povetkin, Drughead. Um, you could question two of Parker's recent fights, the decisions. In my opinion, I, I like. I kept watching. I watched Attack and Fight twice. I said, "What is everyone seeing about this brilliant boxing that he's doing? Where is it? Where, where is it?" And I was scratching my head. I said, "Boy." <coughs> There was a lot of swing rounds, and it, it was hard to, for me to say that he won the fight conclusively. Carl Palmer, there's lots of good fights for Wilder if he wants them. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Duck, don't get me wrong. I don't think any of the current welterweights are clearly the best in the division. Yep. JD, Wilder, AJ, Klitschko, Fury, and Ortiz are the top five, in my opinion. I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Given quality for life, Bone... Bonet was on his way to beat Porter, Porter conclusively until Porter gave him an illegal leg sweep and took him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what some people... I can't actually remember that fight. I remember Porter beating him, but a few people weren't too convinced with that, with that victory. Carl Palmer, Spencer's going to need a bra for his titty suit. Oh, God, Carl. <laughs> Mr. Duck laughing out loud, leg sweep. D of your new I saw Thurman Garcia totally one sided. That's my opinion. Yeah, no doubt. That's your opinion. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Um, given quality for life. Go, go watch how he turned around the fight after the leg sweep. <laughs> Mr. Duck, all I can think of is the Karate Kid movie. Laughing my ass off. JD, Brooke had three defenses, voluntary and two mandatory. That's not comparable with five voluntaries. You choose. Given quality for life, nothing in the world going to stop me now. <laughs> you're, the, you're the best karate kid. Um, 
I'll have to watch the Bonet fight again. I'll have to watch the Bonet fight. But um, yeah, like you know, it's 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 crazy. Like the Brook fans and this this drugs and aerospaces and drugs. What proof? Where's the proof? What was there a load of acne acne on his back or something? What, what's the proof? What's the proof? It's funny how the, the fanboys of certain fights, they say certain things. Yeah, Wild is too scared to, go to rush to fight. Oh, uh, but Wild is the arm going if you think I'll give him my title? Wild had the passport stamped. And he was all. Oh. And then, then they, uh, they went on to other things after. Anything that, anything to detract from Povetkin's wrongdoings, they went there. Anything. Anything. You know? See, that's the thing, man. People say that Tyson didn't fight nobody in his reign. That's what they say. Oh, Holmes was old. He was washed up. Carl the Crip Williams had a doggy chin. Frank Bruno had already been knocked out twice. The first time he fought him, Tyrrell Biggs was an underachiever. He cut easily. Piglin Thomas had already been beaten by Burby, could Tyson beat for the, the title. Bob Crush Smith was a journeyman. That's what that's what a lot of people said, said about to say that, you know. So um it is what it is. It is what it is. People who crit critique Vladimir Klitschko's reign, said he hasn't fought anybody. None of them have established themselves. It's funny how. Wilder's opposition gets critiqued, but Tyson Fury's doesn't get critiqued. He fought Derek Chisora twice. And Kingpin Johnson. And Steve Cunningham. You know? And Mr. Doc, Tyson Fury, now, I'm not going to say the word, the word duck, but he opted to opted out of a few fights he could have took. There's a few of them. I'm not going to mention them, but if people press it, I'll mention them. There was a few guys Tyson Fury could have fought and did a fight. Sorry, guys. One sec. Okay. Right. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, you meant Mike Tyson. One sec, guys. One sec. I'm going to have to close up, man. I'm going to have to close up. I'll be back soon. I'll do another one, man. I'll be back soon. <laughs>